Hello everyone, it's Safrina Kadri from Feng Shui and Prosper.com and I just wanted to do this quick video to address some compass reading concerns that I have from my um, from my readers uh, or my audience after they finished my 2015 uh, Flying Star Feng Shui webinar that I held a couple of weeks ago. Now, um, so I'm just going to go through the general, uh, the main questions that I've received ever since that webinar, and this is what this video will be going with. So as most of you know, if you want to do feng shui properly, you need a compass, okay? Um, you can use the compass in your smartphone, but, you know, make sure that it's a good one because sometimes they can give you the wrong reading as well. Um, or you can go to any store, um, Army Surplus store, or um, any stores that, let's say, the Boy Scouts or whatever go to to get their uh, their supplies. They usually would have a compass. Even a regular store, like if you're in North America, if you have Walmart, for instance, um, uh, you can go to the uh, hobby or the outdoors aisle for the fishing and camping stuff. Uh, they would have the compasses there as well. So on the screen, you're going to see I have a sample layout here of the first floor of a home. Okay, and this is um, this is where the front door is. Okay, if you guys see my mouse here, obviously this is the front door here. Okay, and then so this is the uh, the sorry the front door, the hallway, bedroom, kitchen, living room, and the dining room. So now, as you can see, um, what I've mentioned in my webinar before is the facing of the home is determined usually determined, I should say, 90% um, of the time is determined by the what is the main most yang side of the house, right? You know, in Chinese metaphysics, there's the yin and the yang. And the yang usually means the more active side of the house. So there is also a concern about getting the facing of the building wrong, which if you get the facing wrong, then based on classical feng shui, then you're going to get uh, the rest of the feng shui placements wrong inside the house as well. So, for instance, if I've made up a name here, 123 Apple Street. Okay, let's say if this is the house and the street and this house, the address is 123 Apple Street. Okay. And this is where Apple Street is on this side of the house. If that is the case, I'm going to move the house a little bit further off here. So let's say if the, if the street that the house is named after is on this side of the house, then the facing of the building is actually here. It's on this wall, okay? Or you can even take the compass reading on this wall, but this wall would be more accurate. Okay, this is the facing of the building. What if, and there's always a possibility of this, what if the street is here, right? And that changes the facing of the building now. If you want to take a compass reading and figure out what's, uh, the, the first compass reading needs to be at the facing of your home or your building, okay? So even if this is the co a condo, the same rule applies. Figure out what is the address that the condo is um, is based on, right? Uh, sorry, which which street it is named after, and that is, like I said, ninety percent of the time is the facing of the building. I have seen instances where the facing is actually at the back or at the side, due to other more advanced feng shui. Um, qualifications. But for 90% of you guys out there, this would be a pretty good guideline to live by. So if the if Apple Street, where the house's address is based on, if it's on this side, then you actually take your compass reading here. Okay, or you can stand at the door looking out 
to Apple Street. That's fine too. Okay, so as you can see, this door is facing this side. But it doesn't necessarily mean that this is the facing of the building, right? The door could be facing out here, but if the street is like I had it before, if the door is facing here, but the street is here, then the facing of the building is actually here, right? So when you determine the facing of your house, you cannot go by the main entrance. Most of the time you can, but I chose this layout for this purpose to tell you that there are many nuances in feng shui. So a lot, which is why a lot of the inf information out there in books and online, unfortunately, is not supportive of you because it can give you the wrong information. And that's what I'm here for, to break down a lot of myths and a lot of bad information out there. Okay, so now that you know the facing of your building, so let's say um, I'm going to shrink this a little bit. Actually, I can take this away. Okay, so whatever the facing of the building, you note that down. And remember the 24 mountains that I mentioned to you before? Um, I'm going to see if I have it on my computer here. If you haven't seen my webinar, with the, my 2015 Flying Star Feng Shui webinar, um, click on, um, I'll have the link to that webinar somewhere here. It's just a quick registration form and then you'll get the replay because you've missed the, the live one that I held a couple of weeks ago. But let me see if I can share with you the 24 mountains. So once you have the compass reading, note down the actual degree of the compass. So it could be 80 degrees or 103 degrees, whatever it is, note it down on a piece of paper or anything like that. Okay. And then the next thing that you do is to figure out, so let's say if it's 103 degrees. So this is the, the 24 mountains that I've also included on my webinar. I have a handout which has all this information as well. So let's say 103 degrees, you need to figure out which 24 mountain it falls under. So the 103 actually is East 3. Do you see that here? Okay. East 3 is 97.5 degrees till 112.5 degrees. So your home, if the compass is telling you at your, the facing of the house, if it's telling you 103 degrees, then your home or your condo building is facing East 3. What do you do with this information? Um, again, uh, go back to the 2015 webinar that I held just to go through the information again, refresh your memory, or you have, if you have not seen it, then feel free to register so that I can send you out the replay and you can have a better idea of what I'm talking about. Okay. Because this video is really done for people who have seen the webinar and they have additional questions. Okay. So I'm going to take this down. And I will go back to my drawing here. Okay. So the next question that I seem to get a lot is how do I figure out what rooms fall in um, which direction? Because people are confused about taking the compass reading at the door and then taking the compass reading in the middle. You actually do both. So the compass reading, sorry, not at the door. The compass reading at the facing determines the energy in here in the house, right? So you stand out here. So if this is the, if the street is here, you stand around here, this side of the house, you look out to the street, you take the compass reading, okay? Stand as square as possible to the wall. Or if the street is here, then you stand here, look out the street, 
Again, stand as square as possible to the house. Even have your back to the wall if you can, just to make sure that your compass reading is right. Um, and then, um, and then look at what direction you're facing, right? And then go back to the 24 mountains and figure out which of the 24 mountains your home or your building falls under. Next, you actually stand in the. You actually. Let me put a star here, okay. Next thing is you stand in the middle of your layout, okay? Figure out what is the middle of the, your layout. Usually it's the hallway. A lot of the layouts that I've, I'm seeing, usually it's the hallway. Sometimes it's a different room, okay? And again, with the compass in your hand, it, in this case actually, it doesn't matter which direction you're facing at this point. You could be facing here, um, you know, you could be facing here, you could be facing here, or facing here, the compass is still going to tell you the same thing. Because north, it doesn't matter, let's say if, let's say if north is here, right? Let's say when you're standing here, the compass points this as the north, this direction. If the compass, so if you're standing here and you're looking this way and the compass pointing you north, then even if you're looking at a different direction, the compass is going to still going to tell you that this direction is the north, right? It really doesn't matter. When you're inside, it doesn't matter where you're facing. When you're outside to determine the facing of the building, that you need to make sure you're facing the right way because otherwise your compass is going to tell you the wrong uh, facing um, degree, right? And once you have that, I'm going to superimpose this here. Okay. So some of you who have followed Feng Shui for a while, you are familiar with the nine grid. And I get this question too, do I use the nine grid or the pi grid? Um, it's the nine grid that I use. So it's a three by three and I've roughly um, drawn it out here. So, so this would be the north. This would be northwest. This would be northeast. And this one here is east. Southeast. South. And as you can see, this house is missing southwest, and here's the west. Okay, this is, let me fix this a little bit so you guys are. Uh, okay, and obviously, this is the center. So in this case, this is why there's two different kinds of compass reading that is needed. One for the outside to determine the facing and one for the inside at the center of the house for you to determine which room falls where. So the northwest is the bedroom. The north is, it looks like this is the bathroom and the staircase going upstairs. The northeast, well, if you go like this, okay. So the northeast is the kitchen. Um, the east is kind of part of the kitchen and part of the living room. Southeast is the living room. And then um, south, it's not quite missing. It's, it's there. Well, there's the, there's the dining room. That could be the south. Obviously, the center is the hallway. Um, and... The, another bathroom that's in the west, okay? So this is pretty much a general guideline on one, how to determine the facing of your house, and then two, how to determine the direction that each of these rooms take up in your layout, okay? So hopefully this video clears up more, um, some of the confusion. 
uh, with regards to taking the compass reading. Again, compass reading is the first and foremost, most important key when it comes to doing feng shui. If you are reading books or information on feng shui that do not tell you to take compass readings, you need to check that book out because that is not how it was done classically hundreds and thousands of years in China. Okay, so um, if you haven't subscribed to my video, I would love to have you follow me on YouTube, uh, subscribe to my channel, I should say, and um, feel free to join me as well on fengshuiandprosper.com, learn a little bit about me and a little bit more about what I do and a little bit more about the real way of doing feng shui. And uh, I'd love to have you join me in my Facebook group or even my Google Plus uh, pages and uh, hope to be able to share with you guys a little bit more information in the future. In the meantime, you guys have a great day. Take care.